My zipper's up. <sighs> Can't tell you how many times I've been on stage with the zipper down. All right. Picture this, folks. I'm 15 years old, and I'm wearing one of my favorite dresses I bought from Le Chateau. It's blue. It's a cotton spandex blend, spaghetti strapped. It's ankle length, and I'm looking fabulous. I mean, I'm really loving myself at this moment. I board the subway, and moments later, this guy with a menacing dog plops himself down right next to me. His legs are wide open as though he's taken up all the space. I'm terrified of the dog. So I'm squeezing myself even more so than he's squeezing me with his legs wide open in the corner. Moments later, he turns to me and he says, if you weren't such a fucking fat black bitch, you wouldn't be afraid of my dog. I'm shocked. I'm mortified. I can literally feel the saliva spitlets slapping me in my face. The subway erupts. It combusts into laughter. Kids are laughing. Surprisingly so, some adults are laughing. And then there are those who just kind of, you know, they've seen and heard everything, but they look away as though they've seen or heard nothing. Despite his sexist, racist, sizist attack on me, I mean, I always knew I was black. I loved being black then, and I still love being black. Uh, yes, I am still black. <laughs> As for the bitch part, well, I just kind of summed that up to his one-inch vocabulary. But fat. That's what made me ashamed. That's the word that resonated with me. That's the word in the moment that was synonymous with embarrassment. Today as an adult, I no longer succumb to what I call the thin epidemic. The socio-cultural, emotional, economic, religious, medical, everything call obsession for any and anything thin desirable. I now know that fat is just a description. It's not a prescription, and it's certainly not an invitation for hate, for exclusion, for ridicule, for assaults against my body. And it sure as heck ain't an excuse to make judgments about my health or my morality. Not at all. I have come to see now just how fat and black embodiment how excesses of fatness and blackness make some people uncomfortable, especially those who were born and raised on the milk and honey, the Western comforts of Eurocentric and thin-centric body and beauty ideals. I'm telling you, we cannot, we really cannot ignore the power of words. We cannot ignore the meanings that we've attached to words. They help define who we are, what we crave, what we despise. Words like fat need to be rescued from the tyranny of hate. A hate, I believe, that is so inspiring and so encouraging that millions of people are sucking and cutting their stomachs and intestines into pieces for the promise of health at the expense of unrealistically, unrelentlessly restrictive living. I mean, let's be honest. The war on fat, you know, is invading our shopping experiences, right? I walk into a store sometimes and I'll say to the salesperson, hey, got any clothes for fat bodies? <laughs> and they freeze. There's that moment of, of, of uncomfort. Um, Plus section, above average? Um, no, for fat bodies. I know that they're thinking I have low self-esteem or I'm self-deprecating. 
That's not what I'm doing. I'm saying the word fat outside of its pejorative association. If we don't keep saying the word fat, it'll keep and remain vilified. So what does this plus above average euphemism for fat, because of course fat's the worst word you can use, what do these words mean? So plus, plus one, okay, I'm going on a date. It's an RSVP, clearly. And then there's woman, woman. So I want to say that all of you women in the audience who are under the size of 14 are not women. You're not real women. You are infantilized woman children. <laughs> right? And then there's curvy, 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 curvy catwalk. <laughs> right? My thing is, what about the fat bodies that are round bodies? That are just fat rolls, right? What about those? And then I love this one, Mrs. But I can't say too much about that one. I don't shop in that section because I'm not married yet. <laughs> but one of my favorites is above average. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I am above average. That really gives me a sense of self-esteem. I mean, who is the genius that came up with that one? Above who? Above what? You know what I mean? Sometimes I, I tease my thin friends and I say, guess what? According to retailers, you guys are, are below average. You know, and I'm going to take my above average self and I'm going to go to the plus section that's usually located in the basement or in the top floor of the department store, all the way at the back, next to the washroom, or the pots and pans, or the china section, or the kitty section, with half-dressed mannequins. And let me, just, let me just say something here. I'm not saying that there's something wrong with curvier plus, but I am saying something's wrong with perpetuating the thin epidemic. That's what I'm saying. Here are some tips, some tricks, I guess, that I play with to try to tackle the thin epidemic. One of the tips is, when I get out of the shower, buck naked, I just stand there and say, in my best Broadway voice, I'm a big, bright, shining star, and I'm going to shine forever. <laughs> Everyone stand up. Please, stand up. Stand up, folks. You're going to do it with me. On the count of three, one, two, three. I am a big, bright, burning star, and I'm going to shine forever. Thank you. You may be seated. It's difficult to do when you're not naked and everything's not falling out, but it really feels good when it's jiggling and moving. It's great. Next thing, tap into the phenomenology of the body. Seriously, stop thinking about just the aesthetic. Think about what our bodies do for us. They are our primary sight into knowing the world. Those flabby arms, those skinny arms, they help give people you love the best hugs. Those toes that some of us are embarrassed about, guess what? Those toes give us balance to walk into an office and make the best first impression possible. Disrupt normalized language whenever you get a chance. I'm sitting at lunch with a friend who orders, you know, a tall glass of water with a side of water and starts talking about <laughs> her body. Call it what it is. It's fat talk, ladies. It's fat talk, gentlemen. It's fat talk, people of all genders. It's fat talk. It's fat talk. We got to stop that. And last but not least, if you take nothing else from this talk, please simply think about what I've said. Think about the concept of fat talk. Think about the concept of the thin epidemic. And think about the power of words. And remember, fat is just a description. It's just a description, folks. It's not a prescription. And it's not an invitation for hate. Our rights are human rights. Thank you.